what are we doing? Well, you see, that's the important thing, is that we let our left brain get into the act and say, what are we doing? We let our intellect, not just our imagination, but our intellect get in and say, what are we doing? Well, we finally got around to thinking we have a pretty good way of defining, of stating what we're doing. And that is that we as humans, and let's take the simple ratio of, of here we are now, and we are focused our attention in time-space, and we are very much, uh, say, if you were watching this particular film, you would be focused your attention here. And that is that type of phasing. We are in phase with time-space. Now, if you don't look away from the TV or something and are thinking about what you will do tomorrow morning when you get up, you are a little bit out of phase because you're not concerned with this here now. You are thinking about, you are thinking and doing nothing but thinking. And when you do that, then you're a little bit out of phase with time-space. So you can get the patterns of phase relationships. You're still here, but and your consciousness is uh, not only here in your physical self, but you're a little bit out of phase. And as you do this a little bit more, you get beyond inattention, you have what we call daydreams. So you are focused very much in your mind here, but your body's here, and you know your body's here, and you know you're still in time-space. And so there is a phase relationship. Say, 60% of you is still in your physical consciousness, and 40% is over here daydreaming somewhere. And if you move it a little bit more, you get into such things as out-of-control phasing that are caused by uh, alcohol, for example, and you're drunk, or uh, uh, drugs, and you're all on some drug high. And it's all uncontrolled, though. It's tremendously uncontrolled. And you can't start it and stop it, but you're out, uh, out of control. But you're out of phase. So you are perceiving two things at once. The out of control stuff here, and you have physical matter. And there begins the other very serious question, is that the person who has dementia or some form of psychosis is in a dual phase relationship and cannot differentiate between the time-space physical phasing and this other that he perceives. So he sees little men and he hears voices and all kinds of things that are, are coming to him from this other phase relationship and he can't explain them. And so he tries to mix the two to the degree that they are both the same thing when they're really not the same thing. So he goes into a mental hospital or they give him drugs like beta blockers to stop this other phasing. So if you think of that moving onward out through there, you can see what I mean by phasing. I can probably say, take a piece of paper and say, uh, this, for example, is a, is a phase relationship and that's totally focused. Can you see it on the camera there? That's pretty good, isn't it? don't have to focus the tight, but just get the angle. Now, as this, I turn this, this is moving slightly out of phase. So you have difficulty seeing the print more and more until this way, it's very narrow. You could not even uh, define what that is. It's just a line there. And if you're trying to read this, you're having great difficulty because you can't even see it at all now. Now you're seeing another type of something. Uh, you're seeing not this, but something else. So you're completely out of phase of time-space. So it's that type of thing of these are ratios, and everything is ratio in terms of consciousness. The interesting part, of course, is that uh, we have certain fascinating things. And that is that uh, when uh, there comes a point, uh, we all face, there are certain things like death and taxes we all have to face. Well, one of them we have is facing physical death. And that means that this mm -hmm. tuning device that we have uh, called a physical body doesn't work anymore. So we have to phase out of it. And we're completely out of phase and this doesn't work so we are totally there again. Our consciousness is not dependent upon this. Mm -hmm. It's over there. And being over there is uh, again uh, a reality. And this is the thing that you begin to understand the more you get into this, that there is 
other realities which this mind that we have, this human state, can be conscious over in these other areas. And you can learn and do this long before you're forced to drop this physical body and go on. You can go play there. What is, what is the yes. significance, Bob, of this ability that you've proven that we have to contact these other realities or other phases? I think the, uh, the most important thing, first of all, is to understand these ratios so that we can, we can begin to, uh, just like we do with all of our, our uh, physical sciences, classify uh, plants, uh, biological sciences, begin to classify these other states of consciousness as to what they really are and explore them. Why do that? I, the first and foremost thing you know, certainly comes out that uh, we around here have long gotten to the stage of, that we know we are more than our physical body. What does that mean? That means that you, uh, it doesn't make any difference what you do here, whatever you do. Uh, and this is contrary to a lot of belief systems, no doubt about that. But whatever you do, uh, your performance, your behavior here, uh, doesn't mean whether you're going to exist or non-exist uh, after you die physically. You, you can be the, the a wonderful saint or you can be the cruelest person you can think of, but you're still going to survive physical death. That's an automatic thing. And this process lets you begin to know that, not believe it, but know it. And there's a great difference between believing and knowing, a huge difference. You can listen to me and say, I believe you. But if I give you the tools so that you can find this out and say, oh yes, now I know it. Think of the wonderful freedom that it would give you to know that you survived death. Not believe it, but know it. Look how that would affect your life. That if you know that you survived physical death. This is one of the things that's very common in the use of hemisync. Eventually, people get to that knowing stage. They know that they survived physical death. It's great stuff. Because that lets you play here. That lets you live that much more fully simply because uh, that thing that's controlled you so much in your life, the fear of death, no longer exists. Bob, given what you've been saying, what is the purpose of our playing here? What, what are we here for? Well, that's, that's absurdly easy. And I say absurd because uh, uh, it's so apparent once you begin to look at it with what I call a different overview from another perspective. Look at it. Um, it's best described as you, you come here as a, a vortex of energy. And I might add as an alien to this earth life system. Uh, you don't belong here. So you try to change it. Man, humans try to change it. They don't like the way trees are planted, so they plant them in rows when this system says do it this way and they want it a nice tree. That's typical of humankind. But why do we come to this thing we call the earth and live on earth and be human? Very, very fascinating but obvious answer. And the more you look at it, the more obvious it becomes to you. And that is that you came here to learn now, what did you come to learn? These are nice, neat questions.